Hello and thanks for joining us at episode 36 of Brass Reflections. In this instalment I'm delighted to welcome another friend of the band. Andy Molest is the Corps Sergeant Major at Gillingham Salvation Army, but during his time doing his postgraduate teacher training, he joined our Cornet section under the direction of Bandmaster David Dunkley. Andy remembers his time in Cambridge fondly, a special highlight being when the band played in King's College Chapel. But it's also where he met his wife Julie, a Cambridge girl who grew up in the Corps and whose father John still plays in our band today. Here's Andy just now to introduce Brian Bowen's classic meditation, My Comfort and Strength. It was about 2005 at Bandmaster and Songster Leaders Councils at the William Booth Training College and I was waiting for the lunch queue to form. A man unknown to me came up and said, It's Brian Bowen, isn't it? I had to put him straight, or should I say disappoint him. It must have been that Brian Bowen sported a beard in those days. If I'd had my wits about me, of course, I could have led him on and had a bit of fun. I could have pretended to have composed some of my favourite pieces, like The Suppliant Heart and today's Brass Reflections, My Comfort and Strength. The God of Love My Shepherd Is is a paraphrase of Psalm 23 by the English poet George Herbert, who incidentally was a graduate of Cambridge in the early 1700s. And the God of Love My Shepherd Is, to the tune called University, forms the basis of this work, My Comfort and Strength. The hymn tune is somewhat underused. Although it's in the army tune book, I don't recall ever singing it. It's attributed to Charles Collington, who graduated from, guess where? Cambridge, and taught anatomy there in the second half of the 1700s. In this meditation, Brian Bowen gives us four totally different settings of university, and they're linked by musical interludes cleverly derived mainly from fragments of that hymn melody. And altogether, it reflects the changing moods of the psalm's imagery. Allow me to highlight a few things to listen out for. After the gentle pastoral scene of the introduction, we get the melody by the horns, followed by an interlude that's a little bit more rhapsodic. That's a musical term meaning bitty, and here it's rather eerie, leading to euphonium solo of the tune, and then a rather more cheerful interlude. And it also includes the first moments of, of grandeur by some surprising key changes to some totally expansive chords. Everything then subsides, calming down to some lonely sounding moments, but they're short lived and leading seamlessly into the cornet's version of the tune, where they take the lead. The next interlude, I think this caters for verse 4 of the poem, Yea, in death's shady black abode, suggested by some lonely solo phrases, but it soon moves on to the main emphasis of that verse, Well may I walk, not fear, for thou art with me. And this sentiment, this mood, builds up, leading to version four of the melody, reflecting the celebration of God's unending love from verse five of the poetry. This time it's an augmented, a stretched out rendition of the tune in the middle range instruments of the band, with the cornets declaring their fanfares above. Then the music builds to a climactic ending. And this is one reason for me choosing this piece. How do you end a piece? It's a problem for composers nowadays. It seems you have to come up with something louder, more extended and with greater discords that finally resolve. It's so difficult to be original. Well, this piece just has a a great ending.
Playing this piece with Gillingham Band in the 80s and 90s, I recall the spine-tingling sensation, the hairs standing up on the back of my neck as we played the final build-up to the again surprising and epic chord just near the end. In fact, at times I could hardly play in anticipation of the feeling, the expected thrill at that moment. A major reason for choosing this piece, then. I hope you enjoy Brian Bowen's meditation, My Comfort and Strength.
saying yes to this opportunity to contribute to Brass Reflections and needing therefore to do a bit of research and analysis, now I more fully understand why I chose the piece in the first place. I'm even more impressed with it. I love the the modality that comes alongside the the major and minor that we're more familiar with, the dramatic key changes. Uh, it's practically filmic, you know, suggesting the wide open spaces of some epic movie. And ah, those magnificent chords. But I also discovered, and can hardly believe, that Brian Bowen was only 23 when this was published. Another young person I discovered is uh, a young US pianist, Caroline. Her surname is spelt W-A-J-D-A. Wajda? Wider? Wader? I'm sorry, Caroline. But anyway, Caroline has her own piano arrangement of this. You can investigate it on YouTube. The instrument she plays on is a little untuneful, but the performance is very accomplished. I got this book back in 2005. Mel Gulston at Band Practice had referred to George Herbert in his uh, devotions and uh, I commented how I'd enjoyed what he'd said and so for my next birthday Mel and Jean gave me the works of George Herbert. That's before they ever moved to Cambridge. Incidentally, I I hope Mel has been good as a band sergeant for you at Cambridge and that we trained him well in that role here at Gillingham. If you've not heard my comfort and strength before, I hope you'll want to have another listen. I think it inspires moments of both reflection and exhilaration. Above all, though, I hope that you would join me and Charles Collington and Brian Bowen, and George Herbert in his last verse, which says to the Lord, Surely thy sweet and wondrous love shall measure all my days, and as it never shall remove, so neither shall my praise. Go on, listen to it again. (laughs) 